Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. Hess. Um, we're here to go over your financial plan, which we put together for you. Um, the purpose of this plan is to create a framework to help you reach your financial goals and objectives. The plan is going to include an analysis of your current overall financial health, risk management, investment management, retirement planning, and estate planning. Recommendations will follow in each of these areas. The following client goals were identified and prioritized. Reduce any estate and gift tax liability and ensure that all estate planning documents are in order. Review insurances held to ensure proper coverage and discuss the implications of long-term health care. Uh, reduce income taxes. Review the investments and make recommendations for a diversified portfolio based on your risk tolerance. Recommend investments for the down payment and recurring monthly payments on the note receivable for the sale of the business. Ensure that there is $40,000 um, of cash to upgrade a vehicle and determine a method to grow the 401k uh, account tax-free uh, to give to the children. The economic assumptions that we're working with here is uh, that first of all, the risk-free rate is 1%. The market premium is assumed to be 7% and inflation is running at two and a quarter percent. You have previously been in the top marginal tax rate, but with John's selling of the business, we believe that uh, the subsequent loss of earned income uh, is that the expectations that your bracket for this year will be no more than 24%. The summary of your financial health. The current situation uh, is that your balance sheet shows assets of $13,214,222 and liabilities of $69,935 for a net worth of $13,144,288. Your cash flow statement shows inflows of $1.6 million and outflows of $367,000 for a net disposable income of $1,247,904. Note, however, that the cash inflow is not entirely accretive to your net worth as the value of the installment receivable will be reduced by the amount of principal returned. Nonetheless, your net worth is considerable and can be expected to grow over time. We have calculated your financial ratios and you are in fine shape. Your current ratio is 41.14, which far exceeds the benchmark of one, meaning that you have enough current income to more than pay your liabilities. Your debt service is limited to payments on the remaining balance on the vacation home mortgage of 59,000, uh, which is negligible compared to your income. At the current rate of payments, you will retire the debt in just over four years. It would be fine to pay this off as the interest rate at 5% is higher than you need to pay, uh, but the balance is so small that it doesn't really make sense to refinance. Your principal residence has a fair market value of $900,000 in the zone to outright. Your vacation home has a fair market value of $750,000 and a remaining balance of $59,211 for 92.1% equity. You have more than adequate cash reserves of $850,000. Compared to yearly cash outflow of $367,000, it is much greater than the benchmark of six months spending. This overabundance of cash and cash equivalent should be addressed in order to optimize your use of assets. Uh, we recommend that, we, that you reduce your emergency fund to six months of spending and invest the remaining cash. In the current interest rate environment, cash does not earn enough interest to maintain its buying power. Therefore, once the emergency needs are met, any remaining money should be put to use in expanding the family wealth. And well, how are we going to do this? Well, as the CDs mature, we're going to invest the cash in a well-diversified portfolio commensurate with your risk tolerance until you bring the balance of cash down to roughly six months of expenditures. This should be adequate given your income. Uh, summary of risk management. A review of your current policies revealed the following strengths and weaknesses. Your homeowner's policy for your primary residence is significantly deficient. The minimum coverage should be 80% of the fair market value of the building or 620,000. If you were to experience a $100,000 loss, you would only receive 64,516 in compensation due to your under insurance. Additionally, you have a very low deductible of $500. Increasing this to 1,000 or 1,500 would reduce the increase in premiums needed to purchase adequate coverage. If you keep the inverted Jenny stamp at home, you should consider a policy endorsement to provide adequate coverage 
in case of a fire or other loss due to its high value. The homeowner's policy for your vacation home at 460,000 exceeds the minimum coverage of 440,000. Neither policy provides adequate liability coverage, which you should, which should be enough to cover your entire net worth. The auto policy seems adequate, except you need more liability coverage um, than you can get from an auto policy. An umbrella, an umbrella liability policy is needed for this purpose, and will cover you both. Uh, for issues with, arising from cars or uh, at your homes, either one of them. You don't have any long-term care insurance at, at the present, which means that the family would bear the full brunt of any long-term care event out of pocket. The bills are often in the $10,000 to $12,000 per month range, and the average stay is three years. Even though you have enough assets to self-insure, you might benefit from long-term care coverage, which would offload some of the risk and provide other benefits, such as care coordination and possible um, uh, tax deductions for the premiums. There are many different op options for long-term care, care benefits, such as traditional long-term care policies, long-term care riders on life insurance or annuities, and hybrid policies, etc. The policies may offer inflation protection options, which you should consider getting, because these will increase the amount of benefit that you may get over time. You should, you should discuss this with your insurance agent. Regarding your investments, an investment policy statement was prepared and an analysis of your existing portfolio was performed and is attached to this report. The current situation is that you have a stock portfolio of 940,000 which is underperformed in a risk-adjusted basis as measured by the Sharpe Ratio. Additionally, it lacks diversification, having only four stocks. You have a mutual fund portfolio of 2,907,682, which is doing well. You have a surplus of uninvested cash, which we previously mentioned, uh, and more is coming in every month. John's 401k is invested in a single asset class, which should be addressed. And Mary's 403B is a near-term target date fund, which means she is invested in a high proportion of bonds. Our recommendations, reduce your concentration risk in stock D by selling half or more, offsetting the capital gain by harvesting the loss in stock A. Rebalance your mutual fund portfolio by reducing, reducing the international fund. Again, using the loss harvested by selling stock A to offset gains. Implement a, raw, a moderately aggressive risk model in your portfolio by using ETFs to fill out the missing or underweighted asset classes, for example, small cap, to obtain market-like returns for extremely low expenses. ESG versions may provide less exposure to tobacco companies per your indicated preference. The million dollar down payment on the business sale should be added to the portfolio in a diversified manner such that we have at least one mutual fund in each asset class. Once the portfolio has been rebalanced and the down payment invested, we should set up monthly transfers to add to the mutual funds, which make up each asset class in proportion to, the, to maintain a moderate aggressive allocation using an automatic, automatic investment program. As your CDs mature, we will manually add the cash amounts to your investment portfolio until your cash position is sized appropriately. As you do not need the 401k to fund your lifestyle and wish to maximize the benefit for your sons, I would suggest a series of Roth conversions coupled with an investment mix that is appropriate for your son's time horizon and risk tolerance, which will likely be moderately aggressive to aggressive. I would not withhold taxes on the converted amounts, instead paying them out of cash elsewhere to maximize the value of the Roth. In sizing the Roth conversions, we have two main considerations, your marginal tax rate and the imminence of RMDs. I would suggest waiting until the end of the year when we can get a beat on your ta what your taxable income is likely to be, then converting amount to keep you from jumping to the next higher marginal rate. As of next year, you'll need to start taking RMDs, which will need to be completed before you're able to do any additional Roth conversions. The goal would be to convert the Roth as quickly as possible without making an unlu unduly large tax bill, given the size of your 401k. If you accept these recommendations, we will construct construct a well-diversified portfolio that is as tax efficient as possible while also facilitating both the recurring investments related to the monthly payments on the note and your yearly Roth conversions. 
summary of retirement planning. An analysis of your retirement accounts for John and Mary is conducted and is attached. The 401k is not needed to support retirement expenses, and as you have indicated, you would like to, the account to be used to generate the maximum possible tax-free benefit for your son. It would be appropriate to convert to Roth as previously discussed. Naturally, we would recommend that John execute a direct rollover to an IRA for which we can implement the, from which we can implement the conversions necessary. The 403b is also not needed to support your retirement expenses. You could do the same rollover Roth conversion to this account or leave the assets to grow as you desire. In either event, you might want to revisit the holdings in the account to achieve an allocation more in line with your risk tolerance as the target date fund is apt to be more conservative than you expect. You can add to the retirement accounts to the extent that you have earned income. As John has 11,000 in salary for this year, you can make a total of 11,000 in IRA contributions split between his own account and Mary's account as a special IRA convert, uh, contribution. I would recommend converting uh, these contributions to Roth. Summary of income tax planning. Calculations for the taxes on the sale of the business were done and attached to this plan. Projected taxes on a hypothetical sale of the inverted Jenny biplane stamp in 10 years was also included per your request. The sale of the business includes a 25% down payment plus a note with monthly payments for eight years at 4%. This million dollar down payment will represent a return of principal of 268,750 and a long-term capital gain of 731,250, which is taxable at 23.8% which is 20% long-term capital gains rate and 3.8% net investment income tax. The monthly payments on the note of 36,568 will include interest, which is taxed at regular income tax rates, plus principal, which is further divided into the return of basis, 26.875% and long-term capital gains. For example, the March 1st payment includes $10,000 of interest $7,140 of return basis, and $19,428 of long-term capital gains. Your hypothetical sale of the inverted Jenny biplane stamp at a price of $1,550,000, subject to a 15% commission, would be taxed as follows. The net proceeds of $1,317,500 would have $500,000 the $500,000 cost basis subtracted to yield a gain of 817,500. This gain would be subject to the collectibles capital gains rate of 28% plus the net investment income tax of 3.8% for a total tax of 259,965. Your itemized deductions are limited by the SALT limitations of $10,000 and that's less than the standard deduction. So I'd recommend using the standard deduction of 25,100. You may additionally deduct $600 in an above the line deduction if any of those um, charitable con donations were in the form of cash, at least $600 worth. Your bond portfolio produces income tax at, fe at the federal and state level at regular income rates. We should consider whether to exchange this with a mutual bond, a municipal, municipal bond portfolio, which would be tax exempt, at least at the federal level, um, and to the extent that municipal bonds were held uh, in the state, also at the state level. As your tax bracket is dropping this year, the benefit would not be as great as in prior years when, you're at the, when you were at the highest marginal rate. We'll need to do the math on the yields available from those kinds of investments and determine whether the, the after-tax yield is better or worse than what you already have, considering the capital gains tax ramifications of selling the existing portfolio, which right now has a gain of 71,820. Uh, summary of estate planning, uh, a spreadsheet of ownership and estate calculations was created and is attached to the plan. There's a significant exposure to probate due to the titling of many of your assets in individual names. Probate is an unnecessary expense it's time consuming and is open to the public. It is far preferable to provide for the passing of assets by operation of law, which remains private and is quick and without the need for expensive bonds or lawyer's fees for court filings. There are two attractive options to bypass probate if 
there is a desire to avoid joint ownership. The use of trusts and the use of transfer on death or payable on death accounts, which have designated ben beneficiaries for assets owned in brokerage accounts and bank accounts, respectively. There are adva advantages to using a revocable trust, however, for estate planning purposes. We recommend establishing a revocable trust in which to place all of the taxable assets, including the real estate holdings. This will facil facilitate transfers upon the death of the first spouse by avoiding probate, and your estate attorney can add the necessary language to implement the following recommendations upon the death of the first spouse. The magnitude of the assets implies a strong likelihood of estate tax liability, at least by the death of the second spouse, if not the first. The current estate tax lifetime exemption of $11,700,000 is due to expire by 2026 unless there is congressional intervention, a prospect that seems unlikely given the current makeup of the Congress and the White House. It is more likely that they will act to reduce the lifetime exemption sooner and possibly to a lower amount than merely reverting to the previous regime. This is a situation that needs attention. There are various strategies that may be employed to reduce estate tax exposure. Given the level of assets available to the surviving spouse and the level of spending expected, AB trust should be considered. This strategy uses two trusts to reduce the estate liability of the surviving spouse. Upon the death of the first spouse, an irrevoc irrevocable bypass trust is funded with a lifetime exemption amount minus any taxable gifting that may have occurred prior to death. This trust will pay all income to the surviving spouse during hers, his or her lifetime and pass outside of the estate to the children upon death. As it is not owned by the spouse, it is not included in their estate and thereby eludes estate tax. The remaining assets are put in a marital trust and are wholly available to the spouse during their lifetime. Unused assets in the marital trust will face estate taxation to the extent they exceed the spouse's lifetime exemption. Additionally, a gifting strategy should be employed to reduce the, the size of the estate. If you choose joint gifting, you can give $30,000 per year to each child and to anyone else to whom you would like to transfer assets, such as your grandchildren. This can help reduce the size of the estate and transfer more to successive generations without incurring estate tax, gift tax, or generation skipping tax. An additional strategy for increasing the wealth transfer to successive generations is to open irrevocable life insurance trusts or islets for each beneficiary to whom you might like to provide for and to gift to the islets each year using the funds to purchase permanent life insurance as you're able to afford as much as you are able to afford with up to thirty thousand dollars per islet you will need to outlive the islets creation by three years for this technique to be effective but it can create a significant tax-free windfall for your heirs without increasing any tax liability because the islet owns the insurance policy and is not part of the, of the estate. The beneficiaries will have the opportunity to remove the funds used to fund the life insurance. This is called crummy powers. That this is necessary for the um, gifts to be able to use the annual gift for the exclusions. And by doing this, you'll preserve the maximum amount of estate tax exemption. The action plan. Your overall financial position is strong, but with some modifications can be improved yet. Because of the level of assets that have been accumulated, estate planning is critical to allow the maximum transfer to succeeding generations and a minimal loss to taxes. The following act actions are strongly encouraged. First, schedule a meeting with an attorney who specializes in estate planning to set up the necessary trusts to provide for probate avoidance, estate tax minimization, and credit or protection for the surviving spouse. Be sure to put a note, put the note receivable into the revocable trust so it does not need to be probated. All of your real estate should also be retitled to the trust. This will prevent any issues caused by simultaneous death, which rights of survivorship ownership does not address. Create islets for your children into which you will place permanent life insurance on each of your lives. Assuming you both live at least three more years, you will be able to exclude these policies from your estates and they will be funded by annual gifting. Schedule a meeting with your life insurance agent to begin the process of setting up the life insurance policies that will be gifted to the islets. 
determine the maximum amount of insurance that can be purchased with the an within the annual exclusion amount, currently 15,000 for each spouse. So if you do two, uh, if you do an islet for each life, then you'll only be able to do 15,000. If you do them only on John's life, then you'll be able to do the full 30,000. The reason to do that I would suggest doing individual policies on each spouse's life is to preserve the maximum estate tax exemption at the death of the second spouse. If you were to fund a single policy for each child on only John's life, funded with a $30,000 joint gift exclusion amount, if Mary were to predecease John, he'd be using 15,000 of taxable lifetime gifting every year until he too passed. You can also discuss your interest you should also discuss your interest in long-term long-term care coverage with your agent. They can explain the various options and associated costs. You certainly have the assets to pay for whatever sort of coverage you may want. Last, we need to reallocate your investment portfolio. As has previously been discussed, you have way too much cash, an undiversified stock portfolio, and will be receiving ongoing payments on the note. Our firm can help by setting up an appropriate mix of investments to provide the right level of risk, professional management for your portfolio, and ongoing investment of your monthly payments. You guys have any questions?